What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the NCAA Football 06 Montana State Bobcat Dynasty. Looking at some of the in-season recruiting, we have two guys now that are going to be visiting us next week as we take on Eastern Washington. We have Eddie Fine, the cornerback there, and then Howard Pearson, the center. We are atop both of their lists. Today, we're going to be playing the Idaho Vandals. Kyle Gates, still their quarterback, probably the best quarterback in the Big Sky Conference, at least statistically there. 600 yards and three touchdowns for Morris. Long leads them in every receiving category, whether it's receptions, yards, or touchdowns. Hogan is not bad either, though he's right behind him in all of those categories. Their offensive line looks to be uh, just middle of the road, just looking at the stats. But as we know about offensive linemen in this series and the offensive line stats, it doesn't always represent them uh, correctly, I guess. It doesn't show stuff like pressures. And then their defense, not great. They only have two interceptions on the season so far, both of them coming from the same player who I believe is going to be out for today's game. The Vandals are probably going to be our toughest challenge of the season when it comes to our conference play. Montana State is currently undefeated 7-0 going into this game, and now they're going to be fresh off of a bye week and now taking on the Vandals. So hopefully they'll have themselves a good game and stay on this winning streak. Montana State, of course, the visiting team. They go with tails because it never fails, and we choose to kick. They're going to start off by running the football with Morris, and that's going to be a quick first down, a nice 12 yards there. Now Gates wants to throw for the first time today, going back across his body to the left side. What a catch made by Long in heavy traffic, setting up second down and short. Now Morris on the carry, he goes right up the middle, and that's going to pick up a short gain, but a first down. That's going to set them up on their own 45-yard line. Morris with another carry, and he gets into Bobcat territory. A nice start of the game for him as he picks up eight more yards. Now faking the toss, Gates gets away from the pressure. He had a man open downfield. That could have been a huge highlight play. Instead, it's a bad overthrow. Now on third down, a miscommunication on offense as his man just beat Brock Eugene off the line, but they, the receiver and his quarterback were not on the same page, and as a result, they have to punt. Here's Larry Stevens running it on first down. He ran for over 160 yards in last week's game, or the game, I guess, two weeks ago against Idaho State. He runs it again here and moves the chains. Here's a direct snap to the running back now. Robinson, who cuts it back inside and picks up seven yards. Make it eight, actually. Stevens wants to throw this on second and two. Underneath, he's got Larry Lane, who picks up a first down before moving right into a defender there who uh, was blocked on the play, but he moved right into him and uh, got taken down, but still moves the chains. Here's a flick of the wrist all the way downfield for Aaron Martin. Nope, that's Curtis Brown there. Just a flick of the wrist from Larry Stevens showing off that big arm strength, but the pass is knocked away. After a short run on second down, it's third and seven. Stevens wants to throw it under a little bit of pressure. Off his back foot, Collins makes the catch and gets the yards after the catch. There, a great play made by this Bobcat tight end. Larry Stevens throwing it again, and this pass is going to be dropped by uh, Anderson over the middle there. Martin Anderson had the ball bounce right off of his hands there. You got to think maybe he was a little afraid of taking a hit over the middle. Here's a run by Robinson now to the left side, and that will pick up another nice gain. Three carries and 24 yards for the true freshman. Stevens floats this one to the right side. It's going to be caught. Martin Anderson. Touchdown. Montana State. The pass was underthrown for Anderson, but uh, the cornerback there, the defensive back, still misplayed it, and that results in a Bobcat touchdown, and that's going to give us the early lead. Idaho's offense looking to respond after being down early. The pass on first down there will fall incomplete. Faking the toss, Gates throws over the middle, and that pass will be knocked away. Now they're trying to avoid going three and out on this drive. Gates looking to throw. He goes downfield here, and another just overthrow. We're pretty lucky that uh, he hasn't torn us apart yet in this game. That's twice now he's had a man wide open on that left side that he's just missed. So the Vandals now punting this away to Curtis Brown, who has a couple of nice return touchdowns on this season here. He's not going anywhere there. And then Lloyd, who got hit as they were making the tackle there, is going to have to limp off of the field. And that's not a very good look there for Montana State as he has a pulled groin and will be missing the rest of today's game. 
MSU's offense is back out here now, setting up the screen for Robinson. He's going to pick up about uh, nine or so yards there, probably closer to six as it was second down and seven. That's going to set up third and short now, and Stevens is going to pick it up with his legs and then slide down close to midfield. The Bobcats cooking in Vandal's territory now. Stevens tries to throw into the right side looking for Anderson, but his pass is off the mark. He wants to throw going to the right side again, this time for Curtis Brown, and that pass will be knocked away. We're now faced with a third and ten. A quick throw over the middle. There are more so to the left side. Looking for that tight end Collins, and it bounced right off of his hands. Fourth and ten, and we're punting. Vandals back out here on offense. Great play made by Brock Eugene, diving to break that pass up. They're going to run the football on second down. Morris runs a defender over and picks up a quick 10 yards there. The Vandals on their own 31 now. Morris getting another carry. He falls forward on that play and picks up five more yards. Play fake now. Gates throws over the middle. Wide open. It's Hogan in the plus territory there. He found the hole in the zone there. Actually, it was man coverage. And uh, Chris Bonner just got stuck on his own man. And that's going to put them now in Bobcat territory yet again. Morris running the football here, but this defense was ready for it. They bring him down in the backfield. Now Gates on a little bit of a read option. He pitches it out now to his man. And uh, Morris will pick up that lost yardage and four more yards after that. Third and six now. Gates throws to the right side. Hogan has that for a third down conversion there. And then Chris Joseph, who's now in for the injured Max Lloyd. Well, not anymore as now he has to come off of the field. So we're a little bit thin at linebacker for at least these next few plays. Going for six on this one, but that pass sails out of bounds. We get a quick update on Chris Joseph. He has a bruised elbow. Not as serious as Lloyd's injury, but he will be out for two quarters. More play action here, and Gates gets brought down in the backfield, but uh, a bit too aggressively there. He gets brought down by the face mask by Marcus Kirkpatrick, so instead of a big sack, it's going to pick up 15 yards. Going to the end zone again, but he had to throw that off his back foot, and it gets broken up. Gates to throw again over the middle. Carter inside of the 5-yard line, brought down at about the 1-yard line, inches shy of a touchdown. Goal to go now at the one-yard line, faking the run. Gates wants to throw, but the pressure forces an incomplete pass there. That is our sixth hurry of the game already. Second and goal to give it to Morris, and he very easily gets in there for six, and that will tie the game up after they hit this extra point. Montana State has just about two minutes left to go in this quarter before halftime, trying to get something here. Nice catch by Robinson. He bobbled that initially, initially there, but he has the catch all the way out at the 30. Stevens now rolling to his right, fires back across his body, over the middle. It's Martin Anderson at the 50-yard line making another great catch. Stevens in the zone now, looking to throw yet again over the middle. Now he's got Larry Lane, who continues his great sophomore campaign out to the 29-yard line. And Seth Miles, who tackled him there on the play, a bit slow to get up. He looks like he's in a lot of pain. Now Stevens goes to the end zone, and he overthrew Anderson and was nearly picked off. Stevens wants to throw on second down. What a throw! Martin Anderson down to the 10-yard line. Another great connection between these two players. Off his back foot going to the end zone. Touchdown! Curtis Brown. We gave him the just the one-on-one -on -one jump ball there. And he got it. Great catch by Brown. His first of the day is a touchdown. Idaho looking to do something before half here, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. A fumble forced on that play there. Unfortunately, the Vandals would recover, but that would put an end to any hopes of a two-minute drill. So we lead at halftime now, and we get the football to start off the second half, so we have a chance to go up by two possessions, but not if we're running backwards like that. Stevens fires to the left side. What a catch by Anderson. He's been such a pleasant surprise this season. I had no idea who was going to be starting in the slot, but Anderson has just been balling out so far. Here goes Stevens breaking out another run, getting us into Vandal's territory now, our 13th first down of the day. Vince Robinson breaking this run to the left side. He's inside of the 25-yard line now, just his sixth carry of the game, averaging over seven yards per carry, though. This pass is floated to the right side and right off of the hands of Curtis Brown there. That should have set up a goal-to-go situation. 
Instead, it's second down and 10. Stevens throws at the last second there. He was unsure what he wanted to do, and he threw it at the feet of his tight end. Third down, Stevens throws over the middle, but his pass will be tipped up into the air and fall incomplete. The Bobcats bring out the field goal unit. Now McMillan's kick is up. It is good, and we indeed do go up by two scores now, leading them by 10. Idaho's offense trying to get back into this game and cut this deficit down. That pass is a bit too high, though. Kyle Gates has just been off his game all day long. Morris will get this carry. He runs, oh man, over here. A first down and Morris spinning away. And he gets brought down just shy of the 40. He's really been the focal point of their offense today. He's not in the backfield here. Actually lined up in a slot receiver position. Gates throws to the left side. The pass is going to be dropped. Doesn't matter because it would have been out of bounds. And then Low Lewis, an offensive lineman for them. He looks to be injured and he's going to have to come out of the game. Here's a fumble on the play, scooped up by Thomas Spicer, but then he fumbles it, and the Vandals jump on top of it. Oh, the double fumble there gives the Vandals an automatic first down. Now Gates, he has open running room. You have yet to see him run today, but he does so here. Gets into plus territory yet again. What a run by the quarterback. Faking the run here, Gates steps up and then fires to the left. Long makes a heck of a catch here, taking a second look at that. It was pretty tight coverage, but still a fantastic throw and catch. Puts them into the red zone. Gates looking to run the football here, but we're not going to let him do that to us again. Kirkpatrick brings him down for a real sack this time. Pressured on this play, and that results in a low pass that is going to be dropped. It's third down and 12. We also get an update on Low Lewis, the offensive lineman here. He has a sprained elbow and will be out for four weeks. The Vandals looking for a third down conversion, but they're not going to get it. Mario Harris with the sack. Big time here on third down as he just annihilated his lineman there. They are also in field goal range, though, and they will hit this one home, making it just a seven-point game now as we near the end of the third quarter. Vince Robinson in open space here. Some nice blocking gets him about nine yards, setting up second and one. Here's a high snap for Stevens, who throws quickly over the middle, and another catch made by Martin Anderson. Man, he is really reminding me of Jake Munoz right now. Under some pressure here, and that results in a throw that is very much too high there. And now Stevens, he looks to be a little slow to get up. Looks like he landed on that arm a little bit awkwardly there. So in comes Barrett at quarterback, who hands it off to Vince Robinson, who's going nowhere there. Third down and nine, and the Bobcats have to throw it. Barrett throws over the middle, looking for lane, but the pass will be broken up. 15 seconds left to go in the quarter now. Morris running this one right up the middle, and he has a quick first down there, continuing his good game. Into the fourth quarter now. Can Montana State hold on to this seven-point lead? Gates looking to throw on this play. He's got Whitehead downfield out at about the 44-yard lane. A great throw and catch there. And we also have an update on Larry Stevens. Oh, man, he's going to be out for the rest of the game. I don't really trust our backup quarterback that much. So it's, it's going to be up to our defense and running game, I feel like, to finish out this one. Second and 10 after another Kyle Gates overthrow. Here's a toss play to the left, and this MSU defense all over it there. William Jackson with just his first tackle of the game, but it is a huge one there as he brings him down for a loss of four. Third and long, Gates wants to throw. He's pressured here, gets it out to Carter, and he's not going anywhere as he actually goes backwards. Jackson with another tackle there. And instead of going for it on 4th and 15, they choose to punt the football away and trust their defense. A nice run by Robinson gets us out to the 46-yard line. Robinson running this football again. He made one man miss there and picks up 7 yards. Second down, now we bring Boyd into the game. Another freshman running back here, and he gets out to the 40-yard line. Tyron Manigat in the backfield. Now he is going to get the carry in open space. Probably shouldn't have cut that back inside because he probably would have had a first down. Instead, it's third in inches. We're going to give it to our fullback. And Johnson has the first down. And the Vandals are going to start burning their timeouts. Just a minute and a half left to go now. Vince Robinson running right up the gut, picking up seven yards there. 
third and two. We're going to give it to Manigat, and he has a first down. We are inside of the five, and it looks like the Vandals are going to be all out of timeouts. This clock is just running now. 30 seconds left to go. We're going to give it to Boyd. And you know what? Why not run up the score here as Brian Boyd, or is it Baron Boyd? I don't really remember, but uh, true freshman running back. He doesn't get a ton of opportunities here. So when he has a chance to get his first ever touchdown as a Bobcat, he's going to take it. The Vandals now just playing for some pride, but they're not even going to get that. Pat Hadley getting a sack at the end of the game here to wrap up our 24-10 victory over the Vandals, a team that we have really struggled against in the past. Even in our good seasons, they seem to defeat us, but not this time as we remain undefeated now in conference play, and I do believe that the worst is behind us when it comes to our schedule, although Sacramento State is having themselves a pretty good season. Larry Stevens, not even 200 yards passing, but he did have those two touchdowns there. And he was over 50%, which again, based off of what he did last season, is an upgrade. Vince Robinson had 87 yards, and he was crucial on that last drive there. We did not have a single passing play, and we were just able to milk that clock down. Five catches for over 100 yards and a touchdown there for Martin Anderson. He had himself a great game. Curtis Brown with the other touchdown reception. He only had one catch, but it was for six. And then the tight end, only one catch as well for him. But he did turn it into a big time first down. And then how about this defense only giving up 10 points? They have really played amazing over the past few games here. They got five sacks in this one. Looking at some other games inside of the Big Sky Conference, Eastern Washington with a big win over Portland State as they win 38 to, was it 21 there? I don't know. I have short-term memory, I guess. Sacramento State gets a win, which advances them to 6-1 and one as they win by one point over the Lumberjacks. And then Idaho State will win 24-7 against the Weber State Wildcats. And that will do it for this video. That'd be awesome if you subscribed and left a like on the video. But until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.